All right, so in this episode of Paint Talk, I'm gonna go over all of my favorite oil painting materials. We're gonna talk about brushes, oil paint, paint thinner, mediums, canvas, all that good stuff. All right, so if you're new to the channel, then welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. Now I'm gonna be going over a lot of materials in this video, and I actually have links to where you can get any of the materials I talk about in the description below. Okay, let's jump on in. The first thing I wanna talk about are brushes. Now I've been using the same company's brushes for a long time now. That company is Rosemary & Co. They are really good, high quality brushes and no, they're not insanely expensive. They have so many different kinds of brushes. And like I said, I've been using them for a very long time and I found it so helpful when I was first starting out and I had no idea what brushes to get is that they had artist sets. So if I found a painter that I'm like, oh, like I like the way they paint, I like their style, I'd like to paint like they do, I could find their brush set and see what brushes they use. And it, it just made things so simple because there are a lot of brushes and it's hard to figure out, you know, which ones you need and which ones you don't need. And just having those brush sets really helped me out. Now it's so cool, I actually became an affiliate with them. And so if you wanna get the brushes that I recommend, this past year I actually put together like a beginner's brush set. I've modified it a little bit, but in the description below, I have the exact brushes that I recommend for people starting out oil painting. And the good news is it's not a lot of brushes. It's like six brushes. You don't need a lot. I feel a lot of people think that they need a lot more brushes than they really do. Now the brushes I recommend are synthetic bristles. I find that they hold their shape a lot better. They're also all flats. I really like flat brushes because if you need to, you can get a straight edge. You can turn on its side. You can use them a lot of different ways and they're strong and sturdy. They can hold a lot of paint. They can lay down a lot of paint. So often I see people that struggle with applying paint onto their canvas and they're like oh chris like i can never like get the paint to go on the right or whenever i try and do it, it it mixes in or how do you get your paint to like lay on there perfectly a lot of it has to do with the brushes if you're not using good oil painting brushes that are strong and sturdy and can hold a lot of paint and lay down a lot of paint it's going to make things a lot more difficult i find it just so convenient because i can just order them online and they get shipped right to my door all right let's move on to oil paint this one's actually pretty simple i have come to use pretty much just uh, Gamblin oil paint. For a long time, I did use the Winsor & Newton. I find the Gamblin to be just a better quality paint, but don't feel that you need to get it. I know oil paint is expensive, and you know I've painted for years with Winsor & Newton. It's fine. Like, don't let anybody try and convince you that it's such a drop off in quality that it's not worth getting Winsor & Newton, that you gotta get the Gamblin. It's not true. Now, the main colors that I tend to get are Ultramarine Blue, Elizabeth Crimson, uh, cadmium lemon and titanium white like those are my primary colors that I get and then a lot of times I'll add on like burnt sienna uh, yellow ochre uh, cadmium red and lately I've been using uh, some sap green and I've been known to use some cerulean blue uh, time to time especially in my my portraits now I've always said you know don't get so hung up on like exactly what colors you have on your palette you know I always just suggest at least you know primaries and white you want to add on a few colors that's fine don't think that there's some exact golden palette that you're supposed to have i've seen tons and tons of professional artists painting and every single one of them had a different set of colors on their palette which means that there's no one set way so start with the primaries and white get a hold of that build a really strong foundation of color mixing with those that way when you add in other colors you know where they come from like even when i add in burnt sienna yellow ochre like all these other colors in my mind, I'm still categorizing them as either a blue, a red, or a yellow. Now, if you're like, Chris, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, how can you mix any single color from the primaries and white? I don't know how to do that. Well, I will give you the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. I'll put a link in the description below where you can watch that and get a better sense of color mixing. All right, let's move on to mediums. Now, I actually keep this very simple too. Now, when I want a slow drying medium, I use linseed oil. Linseed oil is pretty much the go-to. You take an oil painting class, chances are they're gonna give you some linseed oil. That's where I always recommend people start. If you wanna experiment with um, some faster drying mediums, I've been using Galkid Light recently. It's a little faster drying. It's not as fast as say like Liquin Original, which I was using uh, for a time, but I like the Galkid Light. It makes the paint like tack up a little bit quicker, uh, which helps me, you know, I'm doing a lot of a la prima paintings. I'm doing a lot of plein air paintings. I mean, I'm doing uh, painting video tutorials for my Patreon that I do, you know, within two hours or so. So I need things to set up and be able to build paint uh, pretty quickly. So I go to the fast drying medium of Galkid Light. Now, in a lot of my previous videos, 
I've kind of warned beginners about going too fast drying mediums too quickly. It's not that I don't use them or I don't like them. It's just that I don't recommend that people go into oil paints for the first time with the mindset of trying to get the paint to dry as fast as possible because that's bringing over kind of like a mindset from watercolors and acrylics where you know the way those work is that they do dry fast and you do layer it on and just you know personally the way i work i don't really work in layers you know i'm not working on a painting for weeks or months and letting layers dry and building it up i work my paintings rather quickly and i'm not so much layering as putting paint on and manipulating the paint pushing it and pulling it and when i first started out like i was using linseed all the time and i feel like that really helped me lean into what's different about oil paint which can be the slow drying time now if you are using water mixable oil paints i highly recommend uh, gambling solvent free gel. When I use water mixable oil paints, I use that and I like it a lot. All right, now let's move on to canvas, uh, or should I say linen, because I actually use linen. If you're wondering like what's the difference between canvas and linen, the major difference is that linen is so much more expensive. Um, the difference is linen is going to be a finer weave. Uh, it's going to be smoother. So I go with linen. I paint a lot on linen panels. I specifically get Centurion's uh, acrylic primed linen panels i find these so useful it's just linen panels can be very expensive you know it took me a while to find this company because like when i was first starting out i was like man i want to go plain air paint but i don't want to have to pay you know 15 or 20 bucks for a, a 9 by 10 panel that i'm probably going to do a bad painting on because i'm learning but then at the same time like i don't want to just go buy you know the cheapest brand that i can find at michael's that you know if i do have a good painting on it but then it's like kind of a bummer because like oh i did a great painting but it's on this you know low quality canvas that who knows what's going to happen to it over time and i found these companies panels is a great balance of quality and cost yeah it's not the absolute best top quality linen panel you can get out there but it's definitely not the worst so i can do a painting on it and if it doesn't turn out well, I don't feel the sting of wasting the money. But if it turns out to be a good painting, I would feel comfortable, you know, selling it if I wanted to. And I always get these from Jerry's Artorama online. Now this company also has stretch canvas. If you like stretch canvases, I get those a lot of times too. I actually prefer like the spring of a stretch canvas, especially for my portraits. All right, paint thinner. Very simple. I use Gamsol. From what I've read and seen, it's the most studio friendly paint thinner. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not toxic. It is still has some toxic fumes. So you wanna make sure you have good ventilation in wherever you're painting. But yeah, very simple. I use Gamsol, not much else to say. Okay, now palettes. Now I've tried like pretty much every kind of palette that they have out there. And I just keep coming back to palette paper, honestly. I mean, yes, like my favorite is, you know, on glass, like it just feels good to do it on glass, but you know, there are downsides to glass. You have to, you know, scrape it and clean it and this and that, and there can be glare sometimes. And, you know, especially for my tutorials and I'm filming it, you know, I can't have the glare of the glass on the camera and stuff, but palette paper, especially you get the gray palette paper, it's toned gray, so it's a neutral value. So it helps gauge your values a lot better than on white canvas paper it's just so convenient and you're done you crumple it up throw it away there's a brand clean sheet right there ready to go if you have leftover paint get your palette knife take the paint put it on the new sheet I always talk about setting your space up so it's easy to come in and paint and palette paper is a great way to do that and they come in a bunch of different sizes you can get them as big or as small as you like all right now easel honestly the easel I've been using the most lately is my strata mark ii now this easel is not cheap it's built for plain air painting but i just i like it so much it's so sturdy and it holds panels so great that i i use it in my studio more than my other easels like you know, I have two other h-frame easels but i find myself using this one just more i like the way it holds the panels uh, i like that it can be up high eye level you know it comes with a palette that you can hook on to the legs of the tripod you know even though it's expensive i feel like it could be a good investment if it's going to double as your studio easel you know it can collapse very easily so if you're in an apartment or you got you know tight space that you're working in it doesn't take up much space it's the size of a camera tripod and especially if you're working on uh panels a lot they have adapters you have to buy separately if you want to work on a stretch canvas so it is limiting in that way that you have to buy something else if you want to put on stretch canvas but i work on panels most of the time so it just worked really well for me in the studio and outside all right now the last piece of material might be the most important and a lot of people don't talk about it and that is paper towels i use so much paper towel when i paint a lot of painters do i tell my students you know when i'm cleaning my brushes 
you know, yeah, I'll rinse them in my paint thinner while I'm mixing colors and changing colors, but I always have some paper towels in my left hand and I'm always like pinching the paint out of my brush with the paper towel or wiping it on the paper towel. That's how I mainly get my brush clean. Don't sleep on the paper towels. I say paper towels are the unsung hero of oil painting. All right, I'm out of coffee and you know what that means. It means that this week's paint talk is over. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.